maybe a little more. I was at the supermarket and I heard the tail end of a conversation um, between two of the supermarket workers. It was a young man and a young lady, and I don't know what they were arguing about, but the, the exasperated young man said, what do you eat? What's your story? And she said, my story? If you don't know my story, you'd have a little respect, but you don't even respect yourself. Just take away yourself. And I thought, that might be the topic for a Sunday morning encouragement, as I call my messages. Not take for yourself, the part about. <laughs> not take for yourself, do. <laughs> What's your story? And then uh, two weeks ago, Reverend Michael sends me an email from Dr. Mina saying, we'd like to worship with you on Sunday the 19th. And I thought, wow, God really has not only a sense of humor, an exquisite sense of timing. And so I've titled my talk this morning, What's your story? And you know, I thought to myself, that, that young lady in the super, supermarket was really right. So often we make judgments of people. We meet people and we, have, we, we form instant dislikes or likes. You know, in Jamaica we say we're spirit tech or we're spirit not tech. And it's based on very little information. What kind of clothes them have on, whether they speak proper English. Um, you know, all, there are all kinds of, of things. Their age, if it's old, they must be miserable. If they're young, they don't have no manners, you know. Um, if, the gender, if it's women, them chat plenty. Nobody ch chats more than we men. Um, but in the right circumstances, wrong bar, you see. <laughs> Guilty, Mirano. It's based on race. I was told as a, as a picnic, anything too black, not good. And the lady who told me was my, my great grandmother, and she's the blackest person I have ever seen. She was that beautiful blue black, um, which, which is just radiant. You know, it has, it has highlights in it that are just amazing. And she was telling me anything too black, not good. And I'm thinking, I, 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 how, do I, how do I get my mind around this, you know, at age eight or nine? Then it's the person's physical appearance. Are they well dressed? You know, so if you have on a pair of tear up, tear up jeans, which nowadays cost more than the, the solid ones, by the way, <laughs> according to um, my gardener at home, I eat aware. You know, I said, when you're putting your foot through your toe, don't hit you, know, they hold them. So, you know, I eat aware and they're expensive. But if you walk into a jewelry store in one of those and a, a t shirt with the neck stretch out, um, one of the shop ladies may say, can I help you? In a, in a tone of voice that suggests you have no business in this establishment. But if I walk in in my blazer, oh, sir, you know, they think I'm going to buy another engagement ring, you know. Um, so we base, we base our, our judgments on very little information, what we can select from what we can perceive. And then we make up a whole story about it and treat people accordingly. When, as we know, you may find that you were entirely wrong, and it was the little fellow in the tear up, tear up jeans who was going to buy the very expensive engagement ring, and maybe the one in the blazer was, was scouting out the place for a high slater, who knows? Um, you can't judge by appearances, but we do all the time. And so, friends, that, that idea that, yeah, I can put people in a box, you know, and treat them accordingly. We have to do something about that because when you look at people, you never know their story. And as the young lady said, if you didn't know my story, you'd have a little respect. And so, you know, sometimes, so those of you that know that we have a ministry, in the, an outreach ministry in the, in the prisons. And so Reverend McElrecht and I go to the, the GP uh, on a Tuesday and Reverend Ann and Carol Charlton, they go to the women's prison and we have a program called Change Your Thinking, Change Your Life. And it is not a religious program, we're not trying to convert people to make them into um, any kind of religion, there's no altar call. Um, it's about how they use their minds and how they can shape their lives and write a new story and a new script for themselves. And it's just amazing the kind of, the kind of responses we get from these, at least Reverend Michael and I get from, from the young men. 
The doctor bird? <laughs> Wonderful. This is her third nesting. That's her story. And the sparrows found her a nest. <laughs> That's so wonderful. Um, we were talking, uh, well, there's an element in the program that asks them to look at what is their mission, their life mission. And we, we get to it by having them look at the issues that touch their heart. You know, and sometimes they say, you know, nobody's ever asked me that before. You know, I don't know. We say, well, think about it. No, we're asking you now. That's why we meet. Think about what issues touch your heart, what things really touch you. And one of them said one, one um, Tuesday, you know, what I am concerned about, I can't do anything about it. It's so, it is, the, the, the issue is so big, you know, that I don't feel that I can, I can make a dent in it. And I said to him, you know, maybe I can't do anything about the street children, which is an issue that touches my heart, you know. Um, I don't think anybody eight years old has any business on the street at 9.30 at night that should be in, in, in the safety of their parents' home being loved and being cared for. So that's an issue. And I said, maybe I can't do anything about the issue of the street children in Jamaica. It's so large, let alone the, the homeless and street children and the abused children all over the world. But maybe I can do something about the one on my street corner. Now, I tell you, God, I, she really has a... a a sense of humor. That was Tuesday. Wednesday, I'm on my day off, and I'm driving through the intersection near, near where I live, and there's a young man coming to nasty up my windshield. Clean my windshield, sorry. With, but they use, they use detergent, eh? You know, soap flakes, and it messes up your, your duco. So I always put my window down and just say, no, thank you. Sometimes I give them money, sometimes I don't. So I put my window down and said, no, thank you, Godson. And this is what he said to me. Yes, Godfather, may I the one. What, I, what had I said the day before in the, in the, at, the, at GP? Maybe I can do something about the one at my street corner. Is that a message I'm getting? Let me just pull over by Abbey Quarter and say, give me your name and tell me. Hope we can reach you. You and I have to talk. But you know, life gives you an opportunity to tell a story and to write a story for yourself, which is really a big story. Um, there's a guy called David Brazier, an author, who explores the humanity of the Buddha in a book titled The Feeling Buddha. And in a chapter called The Big Story, Brazier writes, and I quote, what story are you living? What kind of story is it? Is it a story you will feel glad to have lived? Will you, when old, look back over the years without regret? Many people feel as though their lives haven't really begun yet. They are waiting for the right conditions to begin. Others feel as though it is all over already. Some feel a sense of purpose, but many feel that their lives are disjointed inconsequential and seriously compromised. End of that quote. Brazier maintains that in every life, there is a big story and a little story. Our little story is all about our ego, what we have, where we work, what size car, what kind of car we drive, where we belong in the society. That's the little story. The little story is all about um, the ego and what we have accomplished and what how important we think we, we think we are. In other words, our little story is about the facts of our lives rather than the truth of our human and divine being. You know, you're called a human being, not a human doing. And so, are you being your highest and your best self? Are you living the story that you were meant to live which is a story that is designed to make this world a place that works for everyone. And yet, friends, sadly, it's the little stories that keep us glued to the television, aren't they? Obsessed with the facts of the latest murder. It's the little stories that mesmerize the fans of the soap operas because the little stories are all about striving and pain. The big story is about 
is not about how we struggled and died. It is rather about our divine origins and the fact that God created us to be the part of itself that does something meaningful in the world. Part of us, the part of God that touches people whenever we meet them, wherever we meet them, whatever we are doing. So history, of course, is full of stories of people who are able to rise above the little story of their lives and to live the big story of their sacred dharma and divine purpose. If you think about it, even Jesus of Nazareth, the much beloved Jesus, the way sure, had a little story. The little story of the way sure, if you, are, if you believe the legend, is that he was a carpenter's son who never managed to get himself either a wife or a decent job. Mm. The itinerant preacher finished up being betrayed by a friend and was executed for what, according to the story, was really a minor offense. But as you know, the big story was entirely different. It was a big story that changed the course of human history. And I know it's been argued that um, the facts of his birth and, and, de and the details of his life were plagiarized from the ancient pagan myths. Some have even questioned whether there was an historic Jesus at all. But you see, for me, that doesn't matter. The details of the little story are not important. What is important is the message that comes with the stories we tell and the stories we live. And love one another. Me don't care where, whether you're born December 25 or October 20, like me. I think it was October 20. That is <laughs> Jesus' birthday, October 20. Love one another. It doesn't have any conditions. It just says love. Reach out and love your fellow human beings. Wow. Is that a big mission or is that a big mission? Are you up to it? You know, everybody here, two people say yes. <laughs> because you know what? It's easy to love the people that you like who dress nice and smell nice and, you know, live in your neighborhood. Not so easy tonight to like the one at the traffic light. And you're, you're trying to because you say, Reverend John said you must love him. And when he comes, you put your bag closer to you. Um, <laughs> You know, in the car. Am I right or am I right? I am absolutely right. So, <laughs> the master also said, know ye not that ye are gods. Not me, Cecil. The master said, know ye not that you are gods. You are it. You are it. You know, there was a story of uh, a woman who died and went to the pearly gates. You know, and when she got there, Peter said, um, I need to ask you a few questions. She said, no, I don't want to answer no question. Just let me talk to the big man himself. So she was so insistent and vexed that he said, no, man, this woman must be have a, a, a story to tell. So she, uh, he allowed her in. And as she entered the, the presence of the Almighty, she said, do you know what is happening down there? Are you aware of the amount of children that are being abused down there? Do you know about the corruption and the crime and all of the things that are wrong on planet Earth? You must do something. And the master, the Almighty said, I did. I did do something. I sent you. I sent you. I sent you. I sent you to do on my behalf the absolute only job that we have to do, and it is to love one another. And so, my friends, I, will, I have an assignment because Reverend, um, Reverend Carol, oh, coming events cast their shadows. Carol told you that I always give an assignment, and it's true. And some do it, and some don't do it. But I want you to, tomorrow on storytelling, Day, November 20, right? Tomorrow on, uh, on storytelling day, when you go into the bathroom to do your ablutions, I want you to look in the mirror, same mirror that the king made the women of the village look into. And I want you to say to yourself, I am God's success story. Can we say that together? 
I am God's success story. Would you turn to your neighbor and say, you are God's success story. Namaste. You are God's success story. Namaste. You are God's success story. Namaste. Friends, you are God's success story. Live it loud, live it long. Let it touch every heart and love everybody into wholeness that you meet on life's path. Namaste.